So first of all, why are we doing this? Um, there's a few reasons. First of all, you can increase your uh, productivity by being able to like maximize your screen's real estate. So you can fit a lot of information into like a very small space. And that's awesome when you're developing. Um, also, like for example, you can show what the current version of Ruby that you're running or anything else. Um, you can get the status of a current directory so you know if you're clean, if you're not, um, how many commits you're behind. Um, you can color code different pieces of information to make them really easy to find. You can even color code your prompt to make it easy to find. Um, and plus, it looks cool. So you get a little nerd cred by looking cool when you give these like fancy presentations. Okay, so the, what is the command line prompt? Um, first of all, there's a few variables, but the one we'll talk about here is the PS1 variable. And that one basically sets the prompt uh, for your command line. Um, and on a Mac, it usually looks like that. It has the host name and then, you know, um, your, the directory and then your username and a dollar sign. Um, so since this presentation is interactive, what is your uh, bash prompt right now? So go into your terminal and type echo, dollar sign, and then capital PS1, and see what it spits out at you. Since you're not all using Macs, this presentation, next slide might not be relevant, but. So what does it return? On a Mac, for the prompt above, it lists out like slash H colon slash W blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, what does that even mean? So basically, in this presentation, we're going to teach you how to take your, your bash prompt from this on a Mac um, to something like that. Oh. Yeah, that's my current prompt. If you want my fabulous function, which turns things rainbow, I can, it's on my GitHub. But anyway, let's get started. So just to test out how to set the PS prompt. PS1 variable on your command line, just type PS1 equals hello bash, and hit enter. And then you should see something like this. Um, yeah. Right, yeah. so it's a little scary, right? But at the same time, if you were to close your current session, it would go away. So we want to, yeah. <laughs> Heart palpitations, right? Um, and so we want to show you how to persist those changes. So if you did want to persist changes, if you're not just trying to play around with your batch prompts and you're like, I've got something good going, I want to keep it. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, open your bash RC file um, in your terminal. So it's in your home directory, it's a dot uh, bash RC file in whatever editor of choice. Um, text editors we found don't really fare well because of like character encoding or some things that blow up. So I would use like a Vim or an Emacs um, if you can um, or something else of choice. Um, and so basically, add a PS1. We're gonna set the PS1 in this example just to like two um, greater than signs, um, and then save the file. And then in order to apply it, you've got to source the file. Um, and then that'll apply it in that uh, window. So do a source and then the batch RC file. Any VIM assistance needed? the 
Yeah, one gets set on login, and the other one gets set in um, like session. Like, uh, yeah. So you can source one file from the other to do like other crazy things. Um, exactly. Is everybody good? Do we have two little uh, greater than signs? Sweet. Hackers now. Gosh. And it's the same if you have like, um, so like when you're programming and you have the slash n or the slash t to do a new line or um, a tab complete. Which you might need because we have exercise. Yeah, no homework. So now we're going to do some crazy things and get some sweet information on our prompt. Um, and so using the escape sequences, um, does everybody, if everybody has like the side up, change your batch prompt to be that. So we want, oh, no answer. Um, we want the time in parentheses. And then in another set of parentheses, we want your username and at sign. And then at your host, so your computer, um, and then a colon and then your current working directory. And if anybody has any questions or needs any help.
love this group. We've given this presentation before and we've gotten some nasty work. <laughs> cool. So, anything you look like this, and it should show you your, the time your username posts and current working direction. Now, we are going to move on to something more. Yeah. It's up at the top. But the so you might have noticed that there are some um, differences, like uh, slash capital and like so slash capital W and lowercase W, which gives you slightly different information. One gives you just your current directory. The other one gives you the Absolutely. whole file. So now we're going to add a little flare and get into colors. And so in the previous example, it was just all white or whatever your, your current theme is set to. And just to kind of have more syntax highlighting in your, in your prompt, you can add colors. And it looks a little bit more, more cryptic, but it adds a little bit of flare. Um, and so breaking it down those color codes, uh, the cryptic information have some more meaningful um, information once you break it down. The, the stuff highlighted in red means um, this block of text is going to contain characters that you should have sent on the text. You should evaluate what this hit means. And then you, you have to escape the escape character. So you have to print out another code for that. And that's just With the escape sequences, you also have color codes, and these are the more common colors that you can have on your bash prompt. Um, and again, the same link will have that list of colors that you can use, and a little bit of extra ones added on to the side, right? Um, and so we're going to do another exercise to color by your bash prompt. So now we want you to turn that same exercise that you, those, those changes that you made to show the time and the, the host on your prompt, and we want you to color them as you can see in the example. And if you want to make them different colors, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, one note with color codes is um, they are not symmetric. Uh, so if you see, we're escaping out the the brackets, the opening and closing brackets. So if you think that like the, um, and then there's like an escape character on the inside, and then another bracket that's not escaped. So there's three brackets in total. So they won't line up if you're doing any of that um, like matching with your editor.
come to the solution. So I bet that was a lot of fun typing out, right? All those code. Um, but that's what the, the solution will look like when you want to add a little bit of color around each of the bits of information. And so if you finish typing it out and you now have this prompt, try and type something on your prompt and see what happens. What color is the text? Yep, it's the last color that you use. Uh, that's because we didn't tell you about the no color. <laughs> so that'll basically reset uh, the color of your prompt back to whatever the default is. So, there you go. So if you add that, then it'll be happy. Unless you like your text being the same color as like the last thing in your prompt which may or may not defeat the purpose of a colorful prompt, but whatever. Who am I to judge? So variables, uh, yeah, typing out all those colors is convoluted and I don't like it because it is not symmetrical. Um, so I just put them all in variables and use the variables. So uh, variables in bash ha um, are just basically uh, the name equals and then whatever uh, you want to set them to. So in this case, it would, it's just holding a string because um, the PS1 variable just takes string characters. Um, so for example, if we wanted to use the colors from the previous example, it would be yellow equals and then the string, no spaces. Um, and to use them, you can just uh, dollar sign um, and then the variable name in uh, curly braces. You don't need the curly braces. Yeah. So also we have uh, variables already defined if you look at the, the gist page, so uh, you can just steal those. So now we want you to get creative and draw out what your ideal prompt would look like and try to use the cheat sheets to, to make it a reality.
share. I'll do that. <laughs> and that's what allows you to do a lot of the fun things like uh, have, you know, um, get information um, and things like that. Um, I can show, do you want me to plug in? Or? So I forked my desktop from another GitHub user. Uh, yeah, as most people do. Um, because I really like uh, the information um, that he had on his. But, okay, so uh, this is my bash prompt. Uh, and basically, I can give you a little, yeah, I'll give you a little tour of why it is how it is. Uh, first of all, it tells you the number of the command uh, that was just entered. So if I'm like trying to run a command uh, multiple times, I could do like a control R, like reverse search or something else. But it's easy for me to just look at the number and just bang um, number. Um, and then I have what. Uh, user I am and what computer because I have lots of computers and sometimes I you know go into another machine um, my path and then whether I am on then some git information so that's like the fun part so right now I'm on a branch um, and it's clean I have no commits um, there's nothing from the server um, that I need to pull um, so that's why I have a check mark and then my uh, rainbow arrows are just because Sometimes I find it hard to find the prompt. So when you've spit out like a bunch of information and you're scrolling, I was like, I want my prompt to be so obvious, it's ridiculous. And uh, that's exactly what it is. You can see it from like another state, like it's ridiculous. Um, so that's all on my, uh, so I took the get stuff from another user and then I added my personal prompt on top of that. And so you can get that off of um, my GitHub. In a minute. Yeah, but if you do, um, I can give you a little git run through. So if I modify something, so now it says that I have one file that's not um, tracked, and so I can, you know add it, and now I have one file that's added. Um, I can commit. Yeah, it'll just increase to two. So, and then we'll add that. There we have two. And then you can do that with multiple, like commit, so. Um, so now it says that I have a commit. And so, for example, if Pam was to go onto this um, and be like, oh, I'm going to push something, then it would have an up and a down. Um, and it's like really cool, funky, powerful uh, symbolism. I did change the colors from the one I forked because it just didn't fit with my color scheme. So, you know. Um, but yeah, so things like that are using the pre prompt command and uh, a lot of lines of code. Uh, but for purposes of 45 minutes, that's. Out of scope. <laughs> you can have your artisanally crafted bash prompt if you want to spend hours and hours doing that, which I have definitely done. Gone to bed at 2 a.m. Ah, worked on my bash prompt again. So basically, you can get all that stuff on our web page. So. 
So there's a list on there of cheat sheets. Uh, there's a list on there of a, a link with uh, really cool Unicode symbols, like all of them. Uh, you can scroll for days trying to find the right symbol to put at the end of your badge prompt. Um, there is the slides, the link to the slides, um, and then to our GitHub pages and uh, other such information. The string that you should set in your bash RC to get that from. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. The point of this presentation was just to empower you with the knowledge and tools to go forth and be nerdy um, and then steal things wisely so that mm -hmm. when you fork somebody's um, you know, prompt, then you understand like what goes behind it. Because uh, we found a lot of people would be like, oh, yeah, your prompt is so cool. And they're like, I don't know. I just copied and pasted. And I'm like, you know, you could customize that copy and pasting, right? Like, change the colors, do all these symbols. And so um, the response is usually, well, I just wanted the lightning bolt. <laughs> so yeah, so now you know uh, what you can do, and the information is there. Uh, one of my teammates, if uh, his uh, like branch or his GitHub, or his Git repo is dirty, he has a like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just my prompt. I think people see my prompt and forget that theirs exists because they're like, what the F? Like, they're like, oh, you're using too much screen real estate or like, oh, like all these other things. And I'm like, it's colorful. It's my, it's my personal touch. I've seen people with like the very minimalistic, um, I think I saw somebody with like, one character but it changed based on things and I was like how do you even like do you have to memorize like you know what all these symbols mean like on your on your prompt but I mean if, if you're a power user and you know like what's going on then exactly oh that's a good one we should make this emoji prompt I've seen uh, some other friends kind of like put the weather on there so I'm like you don't even go outside <laughs> But like I thought that was pretty cool that they used some external APIs to bring in that information and display it on their prompt. And just, like, it definitely leads to nerdy creativity. And like when I see other people's prompts, and I'm just like, whoa, how did you do that? And it kind of like sets the conversation started. Like, what did you do with your prompt? And just, like nerd out about what it is that you you really enjoy. But you can use anything that's back at. So, like that's what um, my my fabulous function for a rainbow is just um, a function that takes whatever you input and prints it out. And so, like a really basic example is just um, in your Bash profile, you can say if Bash RC exists, then source Bash Bash RC. And, like that's how you would define a conditional to check for those those things.
Yeah, um, it's basically the same um, fundamentals as the bash prompt, except it's um, some of the ex escape sequences and things are different. But the principles in this presentation are the same applied to the Z shell. Um, but just, you know, we picked bash because it's most people use that. Yeah, um, when you add a lot of functions that have to run, it's, it's literally like running code before it sets your prompt. So, you know, you type a command and before your prompt shows up, it's you're done executing the command that you um, wanted to evaluate, but like your prompt isn't done evaluating, so it just kind of pauses for a little bit. Um, that can happen sometimes too, even with, uh, especially with, I should note, uh, Git integration, right? So if you're way behind, it's going to have to like run through and get all this information um, or if the server is slow because it's literally connecting to the repo and saying, you know, do you have anything for me? Every time my prompt, um, I press enter on my prompt, it's asking, um, you know, a Git directory or the Git source. Um, so that can happen if you put a bunch of, of things in there. Rainbow's a really fast function, I would say I work on it, but... I've, had, I've seen somebody like change color based on like one directory. So like they had one specific directory and so they just changed like um, the color of the prompt so that they knew they were in that directory. Maybe, I don't know like why, but you know, maybe it's like, you know, the live directory and you're like, don't touch this and turn everything red. Um, but yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely really easy with the conditional to do. These are good ideas. Actually, I might add more to my prompt now. I'm like, oh, why is it always this rainbow? For a person. Simple pre prompt. Uh, <laughs> um, is there one? Let me see. maybe like set the day manually like because you can evaluate any any like logic in the pre-prompt right
and that's when inside of it where you set uh, what you want your PS1 to be. So I think that um, the simplest pre-prompt would just be the same as uh, setting a PS1, but PS1 will overwrite whatever your pre-prompt is. Um, Yeah. Yeah, my PS1 just took me over. My boss. I don't know that what the simplest one would be, actually. That's a good question, and now I want to know. <laughs> Just for the sake of setting a pre-prompt with, like, nothing on it. Um, let's see. Dash the prompt. I'm going to play with this, um, but does anybody have any other questions? And <laughs> we'd really appreciate your feedback. We've been given this workshop a couple of times and just trying to continuously improve, get less awkward at public speaking. But 